What's good? Brian Tong here with the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And these are my reactions to all of the big announcements at WWDC 2019. So first, let's just get this out of the way. I think this was easily one of Apple's best keynotes in the last three years or maybe even five years. And the keynote could best be summed up like this. So today is Dub Dub. Watch OS 6 now enables the streaming audio API. I go to Dub Dub. It's called Sign In with Apple. Dub Dub. Dub Dub. That's right. All of my Dub Dubs. This is the new Mac Pro. A cheese grater? Dang it. That was an editing mistake. Uh, my bad. Dub Dub. Dub Dub. Today, we're going to show you how to make a cute, flirty. Dub Dub. It's incredible. First Dub Dub. Dub Dub? Really, dude? Come on, man. Stop trying to make Dub Dub happening. It's not happening. Dub Dub. Dub Dub. Hey, who the heck put that in the edit again? Oh, yeah, it was me. Dub Dub. All right, let's get a little more serious here, just a little. Uh, I won't be able to get into every single detail from the keynote, but let's start things off with the big stuff and the new Mac Pro. Finally, I would have been happy with just a preview, but they gave us the whole wheel of cheese. I didn't think Apple would take me literally when I said I wanted the Mac Pro to be great because the new Mac Pro looks like a freaking cheese grater, but at the same time, I don't care because this thing is a beast. A new Intel Xeon processor with up to 28 cores, damn. 12 DIMM slots for up to 1.5 terabytes of RAM, damn. Eight PCIe slots for true customization. Their Mac Pro expansion module supports up to two Radeon Pro Vega GPUs, and you can outfit this Mac Pro with up to four total GPUs if you're making that cheddar. And this thing even has an option for wheels. Well, that's because this is gonna cost as much as a car, dub dub. Its best friend is the Pro Display XDR, which is Apple's first 6K HDR retina display with a one million to one contrast ratio and a gorgeous eye popping design with that sassy lattice vent pattern on the backside. It also features a Pro stand with a counterbalanced arm that makes it feel, according to Apple, virtually weightless. Did you just wet yourself because I did, but I still need to finish this video. All right, this combo is an absolute beast, a powerhouse for the true pro, and finally, a moment where you could 100% say Apple brought it, they pushed the limits, and they went extreme, and they showed us that they can innovate when they put their minds to it, and you know what? That's a rad apple. Yeah! I don't know how to quantify this. It's so impressive. I don't even have an Apple ranking higher than rad yet. But see, check this out. Let's look back in time. This was the Mac Pro in 2006, affectionately called the cheese grater back then. I had one, it did everything for me, I loved it. But Apple's really leaning into that design in 2019, so I'm calling it right now, in 2030, introducing the new Mac Pro Air. All right, the new Mac Pro starts at $5,999 for the base model with an eight core, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gig solid state drive, you could easily imagine a fully loaded Mac Pro costing, what, 30 gram plus easy? But this thing is for the real pro, or really the rich person who wants to customize their emojis on the new display rotated vertically. Don't shake your head at those people, they exist. In fact, I might be talking to one of you right now. And then the price, it doesn't bother me because that's what innovation costs. It doesn't mean everyone can afford to throw down. I'd rather see Apple put out the hardware at this level, push the envelope, and serve the pros that were really the DNA of this company before they became so consumer focused. Now the flawless display XDR starts at $4,999. A nano textured matte version of the display is $5,999. It ain't cheap. And this is really Apple's grand vision. And do you know how I know? Well, the display's pro stand that's required to use it, that actually costs a grand. And the Pro Stand, $9.99. And like the Mac Pro, they'll all be available in the, in the fall. Most awkward moment at an Apple Kino had to be right there. It had to be. 120 million pixels. Yes! Woo! Yeah! Woo! That's right! You know, life comes at you fast because in the year 2019, you can either spend $1,000 on an iPhone or $1,000 on a stand for your display without a display. Now, Apple 
honestly surpassed what I thought they could do with the Mac Pro and Display XDR. It was so damn impressive and I love it even if I'm not buying one anytime soon. So congrats Apple, you absolutely delivered on making the Mac Pro great again. Okay, I hear you, fine. I'll stop being so cheesy. <laughs> okay, you're no fun. You know what, Jeremy in Sacramento, who doesn't like pun jokes, whatever. Graders gonna great. All right, let's hit on some of the other things I loved. And you know, I'm gonna say the Apple Watch and Watch OS 6. Apple has really hit their stride and the Apple Watch keeps just getting better and better. It's ridiculous, I love this thing. We expected new sleek Apple Watch faces and more complications. If you hear a song you like, directly hold up your Apple Watch and ask it thanks to their acquisition with Shazam and new dedicated apps like audiobooks, reminders, voice memos, a freaking calculator, finally, and cycle tracking for women. And note to all the guys watching, this can be helpful for you too because honestly, this app helps everybody. All right, two big ones for me, an app store directly on the Apple Watch and a new streaming audio API that allows you to stream audio without an iOS device. Can someone say Spotify? Because Apple won't. These are big steps for making the Apple Watch more and more independent from the iPhone as it continues to just pull away. This is an easy one. Watch OS 6 deserves a good Apple. Mm -hmm. All right, iOS had a laundry list of new features, many we expected as well. Dark mode looks good. I'm not here to rain on anyone's parade. I like it, I do, but it's still a little... Uh, too overhyped, it looks nice, it will help some people, but most people will go back to normal mode. It's not a game changer, even if Apple wants you to think that, but it's a nice to have. Now, I like the tweaks in the photo app, and Apple's jumping on board thanks to the Instagram influence to make editing photos a whole lot easier with tools and sliders easily available. Trying to sell us on the new Apple Maps, uh, that was the biggest dud from the iOS section because I heard there's an app called Google Maps. Yeah, and the entire Siri section was just rushing through a checklist of features. Did Siri really get that much better? She sounds slightly smoother. A state at which the enthalpy and entropy of a cooled ideal gas reach their minimum value, taken as zero. Slightly, but there were no fundamental changes that made Siri significantly better, especially when you compare it to Google's on-device demo and its speed and accuracy from Google I.O. Yeah, Siri's still just way behind. Now I love the AirPod tweaks, reading messages immediately to you, and then audio sharing two sets of AirPods on one device is great, but is that only AirPods or is it multiple Bluetooth devices? Apple didn't expand on that, and it may not be the sexiest thing, but it could have the biggest impact on users for the future. Apple started to make their call for privacy more compelling than ever with sign-in with Apple. That allows you to sign into apps and websites with just your Apple ID, but you don't have to hand over any of your private information. And Apple can even make a unique nondescript email that forwards to your real one. You know, I wish this was here 10 years ago because we have all this info out on every app now and service, but you know what, it's a great step moving forward. Apple's also working on their own secure encryption system for home security cameras called HomeKit Secure Video that keeps it secure to you, uploads it for free to your iCloud, and doesn't count against your storage plan. They're also working on HomeKit-enabled routers to protect the other devices connected to your home network behind its own firewall in case someone might want to compromise one and get to the others. That won't happen with that, but this is all still in the works. Now, I thought it was a really great insight to the commitment and story that Apple's been building with privacy for these real benefits that you could see now on a day-to-day -day basis beyond them always saying like everything stays on your iPhone and you know what that's a good Apple yeah. I know I'm throwing a lot of good ones out there but I told you this was one of their best keynotes now you also know I'm a big iPad Pro guy and there are new multitasking gestures that I'll have to see how much of a difference they make in my day-to-day -day use. I don't honestly think they will, but I like the different workspaces and the new home screen with the widgets that I can set for myself. The Apple Pencil gets an improved nine millisecond latency, the best in the biz at the moment, which is a huge for artists. And then you have a toolbar that you can move around anywhere on the screen. Sidecar allows you to use the iPad as a second screen with a Mac on Macos Catalina. Gotta love that. The new copy and paste gesture seems cool, but it did look a little sloppy in the demo. We'll have to see how it plays in, in everyday use. And the biggest move to show us Apple might be letting the iPad Pro grow up a little is the new redesigned files app, the ability to connect to file servers, and finally connecting external drives directly to the iPad. I say hallelujah to that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now, connecting drives is a huge one for me. I'm just waiting for more pro apps to come along for the ride. We still didn't get an official release date for Photoshop on the iPad still. But if you haven't already, I still got to show tons of love to Affinity Photo. It's a great, fantastic pro-level photo editing app that you can use right now. And, uh, oh yeah, dark mode for the iPad as well. Yeah, that's there. All right, a lot of people are wondering and hoping for more mouse support in iPad OS. And after the keynote, developer Steve Trown Smith found it's not a standard feature, but it's available as an assistive touch option in the accessibility settings of your iOS device. So not only does it support a mouse, it also works with an Apple Magic trackpad, according to Trown Smith. And these are all steps in the right direction for a potential hybrid device down the road. I know not anytime soon. And let's be honest, Apple is still way behind that space compared to the surface. And you know what? Yeah, that's a sad Apple. <laughs> but you see how excited fans get when you finally start giving them the things they've been asking for years. Come on, if you learned anything, Apple, this is not that hard. Innovative software, software features people have been begging for. When you give it to them, they love you again. I mean, iPad OS, pure example. Guess what? You're good, Apple. Yeah! <laughs> I know right now you're all, when is he gonna throw out a bad Apple? We'll see. All right, and speaking of things people have been asking for, macOS Catalina is here. It's not the name anyone really guessed, but Apple loves trolling. They were even trolling us about iTunes. Could we take it further? I think so. How about mail in iTunes? And maybe Safari in iTunes? And how are you gonna switch between these apps? Well, of course you'll add a dock. I think we've nailed it. But iTunes is officially broken up the band. They're not getting back together, and I think it's for the best right now. Plug in your iOS device, and now it just shows up in the Finder. You can do what you always wanted to with the iTunes kind of way to manage it and back it up directly from the Finder. I like that. You'll get separate apps for music, Apple TV, and Apple Podcasts with content synced across those apps. iPad apps are coming to the Mac just like we thought. The Find My app across all devices is on the Mac, including the new Reminders app as well. We talked about Sidecar using the iPad as an extended screen, and I love more Apple Watch integration to authenticate for locked notes, app installations, and hopefully more. And then accessibility was really front and center with voiceover to control more on your Mac than ever before. I thought this was really amazing, and a lot of you that watch said the same. So Mac OS, a solid Apple, but tvOS, uh, I'm gonna give that a meh Apple. Multiple user profiles, that's nice, but Shouldn't we have had that a long time ago? Xbox and PS4 controllers, super cool, but I'll wait until we get console level titles on there and new screensavers, okay. But they still did not give us a date for the new Apple TV Plus service, and they still gave us no pricing either. You know, Tim showed us this new trailer that they try to sell on us. It's another show that skews to an older demographic, just like everything else they've shown us. Um, Disney Plus service, yeah, that keeps looking better and better every day. So, look, that's kind of my overall wrap-up. I would love to hear from you all. What did you like the best from WWDC 2019? What didn't you like? And you know what? Dub -dub. I want to see your score from a scale of 1 to 10. How would you rate this keynote? I couldn't cover everything, but you know what? Put in the comments down here for all to see. Mac Pro jokes are welcome, and you know I read them all. And I said it at the top. I think this was one of Apple's best keynotes in a long time. Dub dub. All right, if you like this video, you know what to do. Thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell Ding! to get my latest videos when they drop for a vibration in your pants. And if you wanna go deeper with Apple, check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast where we dive into the stories that really matter each week. And all my work is completely independent. And if you like what I'm doing, I'd love and appreciate your support at patreon.com slash Tong. There's different levels of support and exclusives for you as well. So thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Be safe, and we'll talk to you soon. That's it. That's a wrap on WWDC 2019. Hey, Apple, great job. We have created a new high-performance Mac for our professional users. It's designed and engineered to enable a wide range of uses and virtually unlimited possibilities for customization.